Hi guys, I'm back with a little bit more resin today. And resin isn't a new thing, of course, and probably many of you have done resin time and time again. But I have this new little thing that I've made recently, and it's called mermaid sand. And what it is, I'll show you when you get over here. It's um, resin inclusions, things you put down in resin. And if you build it up, it can look kind of like a Jersey stone or a geode or something like that. But it's, it's for jewelry making use, for pouring bezels. So I have my, be I have my resin mix and ready to go already. So if you want to come over here, I'll show you some that I did yesterday and then we'll go from there and I'll do a couple here and show you how I do them. So come on over here and I'll do my best. Okay, so I'm back with you to show you what I have done with my mermaid sand, okay? And basically what you do is you take your, your uh, bezel. I don't know if I haven't opened one of those here. I thought I did. Yes, I do. You take your bezel. I use this one. It's from 1928, Visa 1928, but you don't have to use that. You can use any bezel you want. Um, this one's a closed back, so really closed back are a little bit easier, I think, to work with than open back, but open back have certain features that make them really attractive, too. But this is a closed back, and it's Visa 1928, and we have a lot of them on the site. In case you want to try it, um, you can. So um, it starts out like this, and what I did was I just poured a very, very thin bit of resin in there, and then I built my stuff up. Well, you know what? Instead of just talking about it, why don't I do it, right? Let's see if I can get one that looks as good as this one. This one cured up really nice, too. I just got, I've got a little bit of cleanup here, I see. Oh, that's just dust. That's easy. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, now what I wish I had, they have these little pipette things. And there are resin syringes, too, that you can get that make the little detail work and where you don't want a lot of resin, they make them uh, a little bit easier. And I thought I had some in my drawer down here, but I don't. But just make you aware that they are available. I use a, t uh, a popsicle stick, you know, craft stick. And I'll wipe that off a little bit. And I'm just, uh, I'm going very slow at it because I don't want to get too much and have it running over because that's not desirable. So... Just kind of pulling it down. In fact, at this point, I could do it with a toothpick. Where are my toothpicks here? But you just want to get the bottom covered. And we're about there. Okay. Alrighty. So now what I want to do is I'm going to start dropping down my inclusions in that little... It's like glue is like a... a um, resin is like a glue, you know. You can use resin for glue. So... It's kind of just view that little layer as that's our glue for our bottom layer. And so now I have the, the um, mermaid sand here. And it's got all kinds of stuff in. In fact, when I'm done doing this, I will dump this out so you can see it all. But um, there's little chunky pieces and little pearlies. And there's some bugle beads in here. And, but the idea is I like to get this kind of chunky in there. And, oops, there he goes. He doesn't want to be in this bezel. Um, just go ahead and pile that. This stuff is very, very inexpensive. So you don't have to worry about wasting it. I don't want real big chunks in there, so I'm kind of pushing them back. I'm just getting it filled up. That's pretty good for now. I can always add some other stuff. Okay, so now I want it sticking up out of there for the look. I'm, I'm trying to make it look kind of like a druzy or a geode type thing, you know, where it's lumpy and bumpy at the surface and not all underneath the resin, which is a little different because most people, when they do this, they want to make it look, you know, all under the resin, but I'm not going for that. So this is just to hold it. That little bit of resin is just to hold it, okay? So now it's pretty well filled up. I might might add a little pearl or something here. Whoops, go back. This is the tedious part, but I kind of zone out when I do it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put just a little bit of glitter into the cracks. 
a little bit. It's a few little shinies. You know that adds so much. There's glitter in mermaid sand too. There's already glitter in it, but there's so much other stuff. Sometimes maybe you want to add just a little bit more. So now I need to get my popsicle stick and get a little bit more on the end of it. Not too much. Kind of let it dribble off a little bit first. And then we're going to go over the top of this. Whoops, I got to the side. I'll have to be sure I clean that up quick. Because if it gets on metal, um, you can get it off. But it's kind of a pain, to say the least. So and that's another reason why you don't want to get too much here, because what will happen, uh, resin's kind of heavy, you know? And so the laws of gravity will pull it down to places you do not want it to be. So I have to be careful with that, too. So I'm going to have to go move that so it doesn't go where I don't want it to be. Put that little do that in there and move that one off and get this here. Okay. So right now it just kind of looks kind of, you know, watery or something, I guess. I'm going to put just a little bit more of this glitter. When this cures, I'll show you what it's going to look like. Well, it'll look like that other one. <laughs> Oops, there's a little bit. You know, sometimes if you get a little bit extra on it, when you're doing this random stuff, it, it doesn't matter. Just take a toothpick and pull it to where you want it to be and get it off of where you don't want it to be, you know? So I've got a nice little heart shape in there now. A little unique heart shape. And yeah, there's a little bit too much resin up here, so I'm going to try and ease it off of here. Because it's wanting to go places I do not want it. Okay. And it's very difficult to find a completely level place. And usually wants to lean one way or another. So I'm going to set this up here. I don't know if that's still on camera or not, but no. Okay, well, it will just have to be out of the way. But what happens is this is another one I did yesterday in the big mount. This is also a Visu 1928 mount. And I just, I just layered it, layered it, layered it, layered it until it's really sticking up out of there a lot. But there's resin all over it. It's not coming out. And this was a backless bezel. So what I did is I used packing tape, this stuff, this packing tape. But you could just use the regular kind you get like at the Office Depot or something and put on there. You know, no, there's no brand that is better than another, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe you think so. If you want to comment about it, you can. But um, I just used this stuff that came in a kit I had. But anyway, it's all cured off to the back here. And you can see down through all the stuff that I put in there. But it's built up really nice. When you look at it on the side, it really looks kind of like a geode type thing. I don't know if that's conveying it to you or not. We'll try and get some pictures for you. But this is this came out really well. And so that's kind of what I was going for with this piece back here. So just providing that the resin doesn't prove to be too much and it doesn't run over too much, you know, that kind of thing. But actually, on this one, it ran over a little bit and didn't hurt anything. It's just glittering pretty, you know. So I did that. And here's a tray pendant that I did. Same way as I did the backless one. Only this one has a back. And this one is Bisu 1928 also. And I just layered in the, the shards and the little beads and micro beads and some glitter. And there's a tiny bit of embossing powder off the side in that one too. And it just makes it glittery and pretty. I can't make, wait to make that into a necklace. It's all completely dry. It cured really well. With Sometimes when you're doing some, something like this, you don't want to use too much resin. You know, it's better to pack the layers and just a little bit in between. It's like a glue. Let it drizzle down through it, and it'll hold it, and you're good. Okay? Um, here's another one I did. This one had a little bit overflow. So I don't know if you can see, but there's like little bit of overflow that went here which I'm not real thrilled about but I thought that came out pretty and basically it's just layers of glitter it's not even the art shard type uh, mermaid sand stuff in there it's just this fine glitter but I like to layer different types of glitter you know glitter's not just glitter there's ultra fine there's palettes there's big chunky glitters um, there's even glass glitter 
you know that's really chunky so um, I used a combination of different sides of glitter to get that depth and movement in there and I think it came out pretty good except for this overflow here now you might say well what do you do Brenda if it does that in an overflows and you don't like it well I watched a bunch of videos this morning to see if I could find a new trick because the trick I know is soften it with acetone and sit there and pick it off and you can get it off you can peel it off but that's a pain so there's got to be something easier and what I found is that some guys will take um, if it gets on their tools and stuff they'll soak it off they'll steam it off they put it in a basket and steam it off but that's not going to work for this. Um, I saw someone cleaning out silicone molds with alcohol. It came off really quick. That was a good idea, but I don't think it's going to work for this. Um, basically, I think I'm back to acetone. You know, unless, unless I wanted to remove all of this and pull it out, there's a way to do that too, but it's destructive to the whole piece. I just want to remove a little bit. So I think we're going to have to go back to the acetone and take that off. But fortunately, there's not a, a whole lot there. And um, I could probably run a little ring of 2 millimeter rhinestone cup chain around here, and that'd be really pretty, and you'd never see it anyway. So even so, it doesn't, it doesn't look bad at all the way it is. Just, I'd like to clean it up a little bit. Here's another one I did. This one's just glitter. That's just glitter. Doing the same way as they did with the mermaid sand so um, but it's a flat piece so it was easier to do the mermaid sand takes a little bit of building to, to do that okay so anyway um, I'm, I've got a piece here and we're gonna do it how's that let's do that and that'll be our video for today let me show you this one on a bigger piece than that little piece Okay, but it's basically the same principle. I'm can gonna bring it up a little bit more. Can I bring it up toward me a little bit more, or where? Up a little bit. Up. That way. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's a little bit sticky on the mat here because I've been doing my resin stuff. Okay. Thanks, Javi. Yeah, you're welcome. So I'm gonna start dribbling in there, but again, I want to go slow and easy. I don't want to have you know, resin. Like I say, it's got weight to it. And gravity will just pour it down and it'll start flowing all over the place and you'll, it'll get away from you is what I want to say. So, you know, we don't want that. So just slow and easy and careful and we're good. And that's all good. Okay. I think I've pretty much gone on there. Oh, but you know what? I forgot to tell you something important because I prepped this ahead of time. You put your backing tape on the back of your bezel. You know what, I'm going to do this because I'm, I'm sorry to go backwards, guys. There goes probably three thumbs down. <laughs> it's okay. I'm doing, my, <laughs> I'm doing my best. All I can say is you guys go make a video. <laughs> but you would think I'd do a little better. I've been doing them for 10 years now, this month. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> I put on packing tape. I just laid it down on packing tape, and then what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's really sealed, on sealed to the back of that. Really, really sealed to the back of that. Okay? And now it's ready to go. So that's what I had done there. Basically the same thing. Okay? So now you know. A little backwards -y, but we'll get there. Okay, so now I have some more of this wonderful mermaid sand. And I'm going to just start pouring it in there. And it can be kind of glumped up, you know, because we're going for big layers. But you can see what's all in here is some glass, glass type glitter, mylar, um, mica shards, little bugle beads, seed beads. I have the, a question. Yeah. If you put the resin layer first uh -huh. and then put that, do you have to put more resin if you wanted to? Yeah. You yeah, because okay. it's too thick. It won't. It won't completely hold it. It just kind of like that holds it sense. in place long enough so you could do what you want to do. That makes sense. And this one's out of place. It's too big of a piece. So, and um, the mermaid sand also has a good bit of glitter in it. I've been playing with this bag for a while, so I probably used up a bunch of it. But yeah, it has all kinds of goodies down in there. And you'd be amazed what you can do for with a little two ounce bag. I mean, it's, that's not really little. So anyway, so now 
getting off that. But you can really use any inclusions you want to. I just like the texture of these. This is a little something that I discovered that I really like. And it's very low cost. And I can, you know, why should you go make a great big bowl of it when I did that? I mix it up. I know it works and it costs almost nothing. In fact, I'm going to tell you a little something. This is what today's. T is it February 27th, 2020? Is that the date? Something like that. This is Thursday of that week. Okay. So during this week, or even next week, if you see this video and you want to ask me for a sample of mermaid sand, if your order is $35 or more, I will be happy to give it to you, even if I have to break open a bag. So even down the road, just put it in the memo of your order. I'd like to try that mermaid sand. And we'll we'll try and make it happen. So long as we're still making it, you can have it. Now I'm going to put a di different color on top of here, just because I can. Ooh, I really learned that. But you know what, that's good, because I really had a little bit of excessive there. Yeah, we're giving everybody mermaid sand this week at the creative group. But we can give you some too. You know, that's their deal. They have to do $35 and I give them some. But uh, you can ask me for some. I might even let you slide if you don't have that quite that much. Just, just ask me nice in the memo. Or if you know my son Jordan and you talk to him, he's the guy in customer service, um, you can just, you know, Send him a quick email. We'd love for you to try it. It's pretty cool. And it's only going to get better. Because the more I do this, just like anything else you do, you know, the more you investigate and play with something, the more you figure stuff out. So it's only going to get better. Better and better and better. Okay, I don't want much. I don't want much on here. I don't want much. Really good if I had one of those pipette things. Let me tell you what it would be. If you have some of those and you like using them, this is a really good place to do it. It's on this kind of thing. Now, I need a little bit more right down here. And then I think I might do some micro beads. Which some of my mermaid sand has a little bit of micro beads in it, but I have some more here just in little pots and I'll do them. Now, see, this is a good place right here on this edge that it could run over because there's not quite enough material in there to grab. So it gives it the opportunity to run away on me. If somebody wanted to put packing tape around the bezel, could they? Around the top? I, I don't, you know, I've never tried that. I suppose it's free to try, you know, but. It's, I don't know. So you doesn't drizzle off? Am I, yeah, I know what you're saying. You could try it. You know, if it works for you, let me know. I kind of have some doubts, and it's kind of hard to tell you why. It's just because I've done a lot of resin, and I'm just getting to feel like, mm, I don't know about that. But you know, you can try. If you do that, I would say do it on a cheap bezel first. Because the B-Sub 1928 bezels, um, they're not horribly expensive, but, you know, they're not 50 cents either. So it might be good if you went cautiously. Okay, I think I have that in there pretty good. I don't think I have any overflow either, which is excellent. And you know, not having overflow, that's just uh, a product of time and experience. You know, the more you do this, the better you'll get at it. Pretty much the way that goes at about anything you do. Now, I think I'm going to take, I don't want to get, come here you, a little shit time. And stick down in there, but I didn't want to get resin over top of it because if you take rhinestones and you stick them down, like if I'd put them down into the mermaid sand, that would that would happen is they would jellify, and what that means is um, when I put the resin over it, you would not see the the um, facets anymore. It just makes them look like blobs. And that's the look you're going for, it and you don't care, then fine, but. Most people don't want blobs, so let me just tell you that right now. Now, I had uh, a few little of these, so I think I'll put them in. 
Hopefully they're the right color to do the trick. These are microbeads or caviar, nail caviar. Some people use them, you know, the techs use them. And I like it to look like, you know, I call it mermaid sand for a reason. It, I want to look like the stuff that washes up on the beach. So we have one that's called Ebb Tide. We have another one that's called Blue Hawaii. We have another one called Catch a Wave, and the other one's called Under the Boardwalks and so forth. We have four of them. One's kind of a blue lavender, and the next one's kind of a really rich teal. One is very neutral, and the other one's kind of a mix of greens. So it's, it's, uh, it's fun stuff. If you go to the website, you'll find it. Javi, did you put that link on the front side of the, on the front mm -hmm. page? Yeah. You can find the link right from the, the front page. Yeah, it's under mixed media stuff. It will say mermaid sand. Mermaid sand. <laughs> Resident inclusion. <laughs> if it works out and I get brilliant with this and find out more to do with it and make it even more and more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and see about getting that name for a line. Alright, so I don't know what I did with my little cork thing, but you know what? I'm not going <laughs> to waste your time looking for it. So there it is. So as for these um, little microbeads, they'll stay. There's enough resin there. I'm just kind of tucking them down in. They'll stay. They don't really need, you know, much uh, resin glue or whatever you want to call it to, to hold them where you want them to be. So that'll be good. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it. That's what you do. You know, I've showed you on one, this one here that uh, has the closed back. And then I showed you on an open back how to do that. So, you know, either way, whatever trips your trigger, you should do it. You should do it. Have some fun. And come on over to the website at beastsofboutiques.com because that's where we have the good stuff. We've been adding new stuff all the time, but the big deal this week was mermaid sand. And look for more cool stuff like that to come. Because, you know, sometimes it's the little thing that little things that make your project really interesting. Thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate it. We appreciate your thumbs up if you feel like you can honestly give me one. It makes my day when you do that. It's important to me. Creating content for YouTube is not easy. And uh, I love doing it, but sometimes it's, it's a little hard, a little challenging. So if you can give me a thumbs up, it, it means a lot to me. And also, if you would comment and say something about the video, that's really nice, too. I respond. Also, um, if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we have over 280 videos going back 10 years. And it's mostly all mixed media stuff. So there's a lot to learn. So I hope you check it out. So thanks for stopping by, and have a wonderful day. Bye.